Good morning, Patrick. Welcome to Monaco. I love Monaco. It's one of the bougiest places on earth. Now, I'm here this weekend with Maserati for my first ever Formula E race. I've never been here on a race weekend before, so I'm fully ready to immerse myself in the glitz, the glamour, the luxury. I'm gonna be living that life, that vibe for the next 48 hours. Now, today we're gonna head into town because we're gonna go get our accreditation, get our passes, go see where the pit box is. We may be able to grab the drivers to have a little chat and also see the cars because I've never been to a Formula E race before so I'm excited to see how it all goes down. I'm just finishing my makeup now. We're staying at the Fairmont which is one of the most famous hotels here in Monaco. It's right on the water. They've given me a lovely room so I've got a nice little balcony view. It's quite a nice peaceful place to get ready for your day. So we're gonna get ready. We're gonna head out the door. We're gonna go see what's going on. Let's go check it out. Come down to the pit lane. It's right on the waterfront. I mean, this is such an iconic place. Like I've never been able to walk down here when there's been a race weekend on. So I'm sort of seeing everything for the first time, having seen it on TV and it's really cool. I mean, they make such a cool race weekend out of being in the center of Monaco. We're about to go meet all the Maserati team. I'm not sure if the drivers are here yet, but I can see all the blue jackets with the trilons on the back one. So I know I'm in the right. Let's go take it up. Just got here and they've given me a little present. I'm hoping it's something to wear so I can be part of the team. So we have got a, oh, this is cool. Nice. It's in like the new Folgore electric design. It turns you on. You can see here. Oh, this feels lovely and ideal. It's a little bit chilly this morning, so I love it. Right, I'm gonna run upstairs, put this on and we will reconvene in just a second. Cyril, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you so much for having me down. Now, I'm really excited about this because I got the opportunity to drive the Gran Turismo Folgore the other day. Yeah. And I know that a lot of the technology that they're putting into the road cars is coming directly from the race car. Yeah. From the race car. Yeah. So, can you tell me about the battery back? How much of the battery power from this is going into that road car? Uh, in all categories, the motorsport, you know, it's where the manufacturers basically develop the technology. And then when it's come to the race car, then they go to production cars. So basically what you see in there will come directly to, to the car that you drive every day and to the production car. So that's why it's amazing because the technology that you see here in a few years, you know, it's exactly what you will have in, uh, in your, in your uh, everyday car, in your actual road car. No, I'm, I'm blown away. I absolutely loved it. It was so, it's about 761 horsepower. But what is the numbers on these cars? Like how fast are they? What's the power output? So these cars are actually very fast. Obviously, we racing uh, mainly in street circuits. Yes. So obviously, they have some some restriction. But the actual battery output is 300 kilowatts. 300 kilowatts. Yeah, okay. in a normal uh, qualifying lap. And then we go to the dual when we use the higher power mode of the battery, yeah. which should go up to 350 kilowatts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's pretty decent for a car that only weight uh, 860 kilo driver included. Well, that is light. That, that is light. So the power to weight ratio is actually quite high. And uh, yeah. So when you put that into perspective, like my drift car is 1265 kilos with me in it. So we, that's an, uh, over, 400 over 400 kilos yeah, yeah. lighter. So that, that's going to be a huge power up Absolutely. There. Thank you, Sarah. I know you're super busy, but no, I can't no wait to see you guys out on track this weekend. So okay. thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Max, it's wonderful to meet you. I am so excited to be here. This is my first ever Formula E race. Now, I've been told all about you. You're the youngest ever Formula E race winner. And it was your Tokyo round that you won, right? Yes, correct. As a driver myself, what I find fascinating is yeah. how much you're actually having to do during the race. Not only are you driving, you have to manage all of this information and also battery management. Uh -huh. How is that for you? Like, do you sometimes, if you're in the middle of an overtake and then you're trying to watch gauges or watch this or watch that, can it sometimes be quite frustrating almost? I... I would put it in different words, it's actually super exciting because yeah. at the all time when you're racing other cars, you're overtaking, you're defending, but everything has to be as efficient as possible. Yeah. And everybody has got this in the back of, of his mind in the race and it's super, super challenging. We have so many things on our steering wheel to adjust, constantly speaking with our team about the energy values. So yeah, it's like playing chess and at the same time driving really fast. I'm going to ask the question, Eva, what would it mean to win Monaco for you? It would mean everything to me because it's a real childhood dream for me since yeah. I 
yeah, I grew up with racing. It was a big goal first to race here, but obviously as well to stand on on this podium. And yeah, I've uh, been fast in a couple last couple of years here on this track. So yeah, hopefully we can step it up a bit and be, be on that podium over there. Love that for you. Thank you so much, Max, and good luck for this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Managed to sneak onto the track walk, so Cyril and Max at the moment are just going through his different points, things that he needs to know, maybe some surface changes, like obviously with the weather, it's going to be quite slippy out there. Now, I'm not worried about Max, he lives here, he knows this track like the back of his hand, but I think the changing weather conditions will make it a little bit tricky. So I want to go listen and see what they're saying. What's the turning point here for this corner? Mm, well, it's almost like a, is it like a double apex? No, it's one. Oh. There you go, it's one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It has to be one. If it's two, you have a problem. <laughs> well, yeah, you'd be over there somewhere, wouldn't you? Um, turning in point. Like out? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to yeah, get it like a nice line yeah, exactly. to make the corner yeah. as short as possible? Yeah. Yeah, it's just with, you've got this 50 meter board sign. Uh -huh. The reference, and then just after you start to start the turn. When I want to be coming, skimming the curb. That's me if it was a double, I said it was a double A plate stacking on. What I always find amazing about Monaco is just how many flats and houses there are all on top of each other. It's such a densely populated area. Like if you've got a balcony spot overlooking this track, I mean, the Monaco racetrack has been going since I think it's 1929. Like it's crazy. It's such an interesting place. It's not quite commentary, is it? When you're doing the track walk, the road is actually still live. So I'm trying to keep some eyes at the back of my head that I don't end up getting run over here. But so far, so good. There's some uh, interesting points being made, but I can't tell you what they are. All right, we, it is day two, it is race day, and we are about to jump into the Folgore. Now, I drove one of these when we were back in Rimini, but this time we're gonna be taken round the track with a professional driver. So somebody who can actually unleash and use all of those 761 horses. Now, I've only ever gone around the Monaco track on a sim, so I feel like I'm going to be quite surprised at how fast and tight this track is. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. good Let's jump in. How's it look? Yeah, it looks good, mate. Yeah, I like the colours. <laughs> oh, my eyes. Right, let's go. Yeah, you look scary. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it. <laughs> my makeup's going to look great after this. Okay, let's go get in the Folgore. I am ready to rob a bank and I'm ready to go around the Monaco's. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Marcello. Marcello. Right, you are given the task of taking me on the fastest hot lap round Monaco circuit. Yeah, I will try to give my best. <laughs> yeah. Have you driven this many times? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Perfect. All right, let's go. It feels so, like the acceleration is so aggressive. Yeah, go on, hit the baby. Yeah. It is such a different driving experience than the electric car. Yes, yeah, especially because we have no sounds. That's so sweet. I've never been driven in one at speed, so like the sensation is so different. Because your brain is trying to like pick up how fast you're actually yeah, going. Yeah, especially because you're in the the way how you're using the throttle is different because it's it's so connected with the yeah the torque is so immediate. Couldn't speed the there brake. There is no lag. No. <laughs> yeah. There's no and lag, and there's just like going. it's quite violent on your body in a way. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> There is Bruno in front of it, no? It feels quite amazing that you're in such a luxury car but it's able to do this. Yeah. And we are on the on a normal tire. I mean we are it's a high efficiency tire for electric car. So yeah. the nice thing that the three engine we can control the performance of the tire, maximize the performance. Yeah. I actually can't get over like this. It's a level it's a level B. Yeah. It's, it's not something sport or racing or... No. It's genuinely impressive, this speed. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was all I did. And that's it? Yeah. That was over in like a second. Yeah. That was so quick. Because we are fast. That's because we are fast. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, I, isn't it amazing that this road car can do this? Yeah, I mean, especially the sensation that you have in Corsa mode and after if you turn on GT mode, it's yeah. super comfort. And so you can cruise and you can go on the track yeah. with the same car. It's a very uh, impressive vehicle. That is such an interesting experience. I'm so, you can't quite comprehend how fast you're going. And you're in this like beautiful car, it's luxury. But then you realize that you're doing like 188 kilometers going down the back street. It's, it's honestly so bizarre, but so impressive at the same time. Like your senses, your eyes can't quite catch up with how quickly the road ahead is, is counted down. Like it was over in like three seconds. I don't even know how long I was out for. It felt like 10 seconds. I think when you've driven Monaco so many times, you're just like, oh, I'd never realized I could go that fast through that pit. No, it's, it's very tight. You can understand if you were sort of a few cars abreast how the, it's so tricky. And to come down, it's fair one. The braking power that the car needs to be able to just stop it because it's going so fast. It's very impressive. Very impressive. I, honestly, I have, like, I drove it, I loved it. Now I'm like, that thing's actually a weapon because it is. Uh, so we're going to go to the Rascast. We're going to watch the race today. Um, the races are actually shorter than I thought they were. They're about 28, 29 laps, about half an hour. Um, but yeah, compact race. Looking forward to seeing it. Apparently it's going to be lots of overtakes. The weather's a lot better than yesterday, thank goodness. And yeah, I'm going to enjoy my first ever Formula E race in the lovely Monaco. And thank goodness, I've got blue skies for it. It's lovely. <laughs> people come down to the paddock it's an autograph signing session right now it's between the qualification and the actual race it's wonderful for people watching the fashion all the different people coming here like you're just wondering like who's that who's that I, I just love it everyone's so glamorous it's very much a lifestyle I'm just gonna slide on in we're about to go have a chat with Giovanni and he is the head of Maserati Corsa and he will be taking Maserati into the next generation there's so much going on, there's GT2 cars, there is new MC20 race cars, and obviously we have Thibaut Folgre and the Formula E program. It's a really exciting time. After spending some time in the Gran Turismo on the track, I can see electric racing is only gonna get faster and faster. They're all crazy, if that's possible. I have managed to snag five minutes with Giovanni, who is the head of Maserati course. And I just wanted to ask you a question. This must be so exciting for you to be here and see how Maserati is going in such a brilliant direction. Absolutely. I mean, as you know, we're born on track, so every time you find yourself in a circuit with cars, with race car drivers, with the competition in our DNA, it's really exhilarating. And then to be the first Italian automobile brand to be in Formula E, that's another milestone for us. We won lots of championships across Formula One, Indianapolis 500, GT racing with Andrea Bertolini. So now to be in Formula E and competing again after so many years outside of the championship circuit, it's been fantastic. So just to explain to everybody, Maserati Corsa is the purely racing side of the brand. But the really cool thing is, is that they're taking the technology from the race cars and putting it into the road cars. You asked me earlier, how was the trip around the track? It's unbelievable how fast these cars are, right? It's incredible. And that's, you know, technology transfer is a key for us. We're in this space because it's a natural choice for us. We're going full electric by 2028. So all the Maserati cars will be electric. And it is a great incubator for innovation and technology. So we apply that to our road cars. Obviously the folder that you were just in a few minutes ago. And the acceleration in that car is impressive. Your brain is not able to register exactly what happened while you're going so fast. Top speed is 320. Uh, zero to 100 kilometers an hour, 2.6 seconds. So you feel that energy and it's, it's great to showcase it here, to have someone like you sit in and experience it yourself. Uh, but uh, yeah, Maserati Corsa is the racing aspect of Maserati. And uh, we've been in racing for almost 110 years. And uh, for us to be back to racing is really, it drives our blood, it, it, it makes our hearts beat. And everything we do on track, we really wanted to reflect on the cars that we make for you and I that are gonna drive on the street on our journeys from work, home, etc. And um, and I think this is the part that's really exciting for our consumers to understand. Well thank you so much for your thank time. You. I'm looking forward to the race this afternoon and uh, thank you for having me. Thank you.
Well, here we are. We are on the grid. The guys are ready to go. I'm so excited. Do you know what? They've been doing some little burnouts, been showing everyone how fast, how powerful these cars are. I can't wait. This is my first ever Formula E race. Oh, what a place to start. Monaco. I love the energy. I love the vibe. There's so many people out here. Like, it's actually way bigger than I thought it was. It's really cool to see that this racing series is getting so much bigger. And Maserati, I mean, they can only go from strength to strength. They've been in this series for one year and look how good they're doing already. Just gonna, I think Max has got some, I think Max is going to do really well this weekend. I mean, he's coming off the back of points. He's coming off a win in Tokyo. He's got a good feeling. Monaco is his home race, so like we spoke to him earlier, he said it would mean everything to him if he was to get a win here. But I don't want to jinx it, so I'm just going to put the good energy, the good vibes into the air. The sun's out. I reckon he'll do it. We're just about to see the start of the race, and... Well, there you go. Honestly, the electric cars, as soon as they put their foot down, they're gone. They were just doing a little rolling burnout then. All I could smell was a tire smell. I was like, no one told me we were going to an electric drift event. It's good. Honestly. They're so fast. <laughs> is so tight because all the cars are standardized across the field it means that everybody is having to use their strategy in order to race that means everyone's bunched up together there's so much going on everyone's pushing and shoving as like drivers got their elbows out it's actually really exciting racing because sometimes when you're watching other race series someone's gone off in first or whatever and it's just not really much happening but every single lap there is stuff happening you're always like oh, 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 like it's really cool, actually. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. just jumped into the car after the Formula E race. It was so good. Do you know what? I was a little bit of a skeptic before I came here, but I feel like I'm a convert. The racing is really close. The battery strategy, there's so much going on and the people, the energy, the vibe. I've just really enjoyed all of it. Max managed to get within the top 10, so he's put more points on the board. So he's he's on a roll really heading into the Berlin e -Prix. I'm obviously coming off the back of the win in Tokyo and then more points here. You know, I, he's looking really good for the end of the season. And at the end of the day, you've got to remember that this team is still in its infancy, really. I've learned a lot about their electric program. I mean, obviously, we started with the Folgory day and now we're here with the Formula E team. It's 100% electric, but it goes back to that whole thing of when the race cars are reflecting what's happening on the road. It makes for a really exciting future for the brand. I've had so much access chatting to Giovanni, chatting to the drivers really being allowed to be within the paddock and seeing how everything happens i've had the full race experience and look i've been in monaco for the weekend we've had some sunshine we've had some good racing i'm a happy girl i'm i'm absolutely tired now i'm i'm delighted to be in the back seat of a gricali because it's very very comfortable and i'm going to head off to the airport after having an amazing weekend a big big thank you to maserati for having me and we'll see what's happening at the london e i'll see you guys soon